Welcome to the panel presented by SportCheck here in Glendale, Arizona. Tony Barr here alongside Bob Stoffer and Jack Michaels. Gentlemen, the Oilers finish off a four-game homestand with a 2-2 two and two record, a, a pretty significant loss to the New Jersey Devils. Bob, this is as must-win as it gets for the team, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's all relative, right? Uh, they've had a pretty good stretch here of late. They've gone 7-3-2 and two over the last 12 games. Obviously did not end the homestand the way... They wanted to. Uh, for the fans, I'm sure there's exasperation and frustration for the players living in the moment. I'm going to guess that's the case, but the players have to park it and get right back at it. And uh, you know what? If there's any organization that's shown you, hey, never write off a team at any time, it's Arizona. It's been an amazing accomplishment this yeah. year. Rick Talk and Jack, we both vote for the uh, coach of the year, and he's going to be on our ballots because he's done a tremendous job. And for the Oilers, they're not out of it. I don't care what the percentages say. You can still work your way back in the mix, but it's got to start with a positive result and to, to forget about some of the things that went wrong against New Jersey. And I would concur with you, Tony. I mean, this is about as must-win as it gets because as much as I believe in what Rick Tockett has done with this Arizona club, it's also the club that right now is three points inside the playoff cut line. But when you consider that Dallas and St. Louis are the alternatives, I would suggest those teams probably have a better chance to finish higher than Arizona in the standings. So this is the team that Edmonton's going to have to catch, and it's a four-point game. So the Oilers ultimately, I think, must not only win the game, but win it in regulation. And it's interesting that for both of these teams, they started playing better the last time they saw one another, February 19th. Since then, Arizona's won 10 of 12, and Bob, is, as he already mentioned, the Oilers' streak that that kind of hit a blip on Jersey, but that's the key. I mean, you gotta you gotta quickly put that in the rearview mirror because you cannot afford another four point swing in Arizona's favor on Saturday night. One of the things that I'm looking forward to, I think the Oilers for the most part, uh, and I'm sure Jack, you probably agree with me on this. They play better on the road all year like, yep. than they have at home for whatever reason. I think they just go out there and play. Uh, obviously, the three uh, centers uh, at today's. Uh, uh, morning uh, practice uh, held back at Edmonton. I think caught some people by surprise, but uh, I think they might be able to create some mismatches possibly with Gagne's line in a in a in a, a sort of a or sorry with Gagne playing with Nugent Hopkins on the third line with Kara, which was the second line in the last game. So I'm going to be really intrigued to see how uh, Edmonton comes out against Arizona. Arizona's D can move the puck, and their goalie's stopping the puck. And for Miko Koskinen, he needs a bounce back performance. The other thing I look for, excuse me, Tony, on this road trip would be potentially a real evening out of uh, the D-Med minutes because Matt Benning and Andre Sekra, I think Sekra's now 12, 13 games back. He's starting to show that he can handle a, a more significant load than he's used to. He, he was telling me it's actually a challenge for him to go ahead and play 15 and a half minutes. I think he might be more comfortable and the team might benefit if he's closer to 19 or 20. And quite frankly, Matt Benning, I mean, I know he had a goal and an assist, but he's actually been playing very well for the Oilers, by far the team's plus minus leader. I would look on this road trip I'm not sure you're going to see six guys playing 20 minutes each, but there might be some evening out of the scales. So just something to look for on the trip. Despite the loss on Wednesday, gentlemen, uh, Connor McDavid recorded his third 100-point season. He joins Wayne Gretzky, Lemieux, Dill Howardchuk, and Sidney Crosby as the only players to do so before the age of 23. Jack, I just want to quickly touch up on that and how remarkable of an accomplishment that is from the 22-year-old. Well, I mean, whenever you start mentioning Wayne and Mario, uh, that's that's a pretty good company. And, and you know what? And Bob would be probably the first to remind everyone that it was a little bit different scoring in the 80s and 90s than what it is in, in this particular decade. It's a magnificent accomplishment, and it's the first time in nearly a decade that anyone has done it in the NHL. Three consecutive 100-point years. Alex Ovechkin was the last guy to do it between 2008 and 2010. I mean, it's a significant accomplishment, and it's also significant because Connor McDavid, like Leon Dreisaitl, has played with virtually everyone on the Oilers roster this year. He has not had, you know, go-to line mates. He has not had a, a sequence of playing 30, 40 games in a row with the same guy. He's made everyone around him better. And I think he, along with Leon, are two of the primary reasons why we're still talking yeah. about a playoff race right you now. You know, we're watching, you know, two guys. I mean, one guy obviously is a superstar player. We know that, and another guy, is on the precipice of joining the NHL's elite as a top 25 player. And he's playing at that level right now. This year, Leon's been a superstar, in my opinion. Yeah, so uh, in Connor's case, I mean, three years in a row, 100-plus points. He was the only guy in the league two years ago to hit it. 
Uh, man, it's if you look at score effects and, and then you also take a look at error adjusted scoring, you know, let's what would Connor be at 160 to 180 points uh, season three years in a row going back to when Wayne played. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, and the great thing about about Connor and Leon or even Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who's had a career year, all three of those guys would gladly uh, not have, give up the career offensive years for some more wins to get the team in the playoffs. Well, McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Nugent Hopkins, as you mentioned, all aim to help the Edmonton Northerners steal two points from the Gila River Arena. Jack and Bob will have the call on 6.30. Chad, we'll have you covered right here on Oilers TV. This has been the panel presented by Sportcheck from beautiful Glendale, Arizona.